Good morning, everyone. I'm Alan Sandoval. I'll be moderating this session. Uh, with us today is Dave Mickelson. Dave's been working in the geospatial industry for over 22 years across many disciplines, including county, the municipal government, public school systems, and private consulting. Dave developed software websites. He believes the key to creating easy to use tools requires a thorough understanding of the problem, observing the real people using your tool, and without question, taking the earbuds out and connecting with the real users. Dave is also a big proponent of using open source software. The ethos matches his core beliefs of openness, transparency, and freedom. Um, and today he'll be pre presenting on creating human-centered mapping websites, how to. Something I want to talk about, you'll notice first off that I've kind of crossed out user here and made it human-centered design. And um, this is an important part because user sometimes gives a weird connotation, um, maybe negative sometimes, I think, where human is, I think of it as everybody. So I'm going to talk a lot about HCD and using usability and doing user research and a lot less about actually mapping websites because the concepts of human-centered design applies to everything and it's not just mapping websites. So what we're going to talk about and what we're going to actually demonstrate near the end of this is going to be th things you can use to do it um, on map viewers or anything you do. It could be physical products too. So when I say human-centered design, what does that really mean? And I'd like to start off with this quote because this quote I think is um, really what describes what's going on when you're talking about human-centered design. Um, it's not really about what it looks like, it's really how it works and that's really important. So how it works is important but it's not how it works for you, it's how it works for everybody else. <clears throat> so I'll start off with probably the worst design in the history of humankind, I think. And that's what we see up here, which is the DMV, right? So you're all shaking your heads. You all experience this. Unfortunately, a lot of people that come to this conference and um, a lot of people that are here are working government. And this is what people think of when they come into government is this experience right here. If you look at this, there's 18 lines, right? And we all know what happens. You walk in, you're very unsure of what to do, what to start. You're not even sure even when you finally come in there and get the directions of what you're supposed to do, if you're going to have all the information you need, if the things they're telling you are actually right. So you come into this, you're anxious, you're angry, you're frustrated, um, and that's not where you want people to be when you come into this. People coming to the DMV, they just want their driver's license. It should be a very simple task, but they make it a not simple task. And even worse, if you start looking in, I'm going to point this out, is look what they think about accessibility in this office. They put a wheelchair, handicap accessible chair, somewhere where no one who's handicapped could ever possibly get to. This is a problem. Now let's look at the other side. Another thing that people want, their cell phones, iPhones, right? So people will wait outside overnight and they're happy about it. And look at, look at the people working at this Apple store, they're clapping. They're happy too. They're all excited. And when they come in through this process, right, what they're interested in getting is an iPhone. And Apple has made it really easy to come into this phone, this store, and buy an iPhone. Even though it could be, you could come in with different carriers and a phone number, the whole process is pretty seamless, right? If you've experienced this, it's, it's good. Both people in both situations, it could be the same person. They both want the same outcomes. They both want an iPhone pretty badly. And definitely, by far, I think everyone would agree that you have to have a driver's license. But why are these processes different? So we come back and we look at this DMV and what's going on. These lines and the whole concept, the conceptual model that gets built around getting the driver's license here, is built on the concept of how can we make it easier for DMV employees to enter in information? And that's backwards, right? So the DMV employees get angry when the customers come in and they're struggling to follow this process. And really the blame is on them for not designing the process more like what they do at the Apple Store, making it really easy to get your driver's license. And this will come into, I'll call this, um, I'll use Davism as kind of my brand, so I'll say this is Davism's law of um, usability in UX. Um, and complexity belongs to you, not the customer. 
And if you can start grasping and believing in this, that will start you down the path of making more usable websites. The second part of that is that you need to design around the customer's expectations, right? What that might look like, it, so when you're talking about this stuff, what you want to keep in mind is that complexity, what it really means is this quote from Matt LeBlanc, and um, it's been retweeted and used. I've seen it on posters, and I think it um, gets right down to the crux of the problem. When you have to explain something, like walking into that DMV, and you get this big instruction sheet, sheet that maybe it takes 20 minutes to get through, that it's, like a good, it's like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's really not that good. And the same thing applies to your websites, whatever physical interaction you have, um, and map viewers. It's all the same. A good example of something like this is when um, I came into the conference center yesterday afternoon. There was all these signs about not parking in the red zone. Don't park in the red zone. So it's obvious they've had really big problems with people pulling into the convention center parking lot and parking in the Marriott sp spots. Well, why didn't they just make that entrance come in and avoid the um, Marriott spots from the beginning? If most of the people are coming into the convention center and parking, they would have avoided that whole situation. They wouldn't need the signs. So to me, that's a design problem. They could have done something better about the design. That might not be the only solution, but there could have been others. When users come to your sites, especially probably mapping sites, and this is more theory and assumption, I would want to see this with users. And that, this is a concept that I'll talk about a lot is I want to see how people react to it. But most people's dream when they come to any website, especially websites where they're trying to get information, this is the dream. They want to type in their name, their address, and then there's a button that says sort it all out. And that's about it. Really what they want is just the button, sort it all out. If you could do this, then you, you're, you got it. But I doubt anyone could do that because you would have no information about what you're sorting. So now you might be asking yourself, how do I get started doing this? And that would be a really good question. Unfortunately for you, you're going to have to talk to humans. And this is the key. You, you have to talk to them. And not just talk to them. You're going to have to observe them. And my um, attempt to get baseball into every presentation I make, um, I will pull in a Yogi Berra, even though he plays for a team that I will not name, or umped or well, coached for the team I don't want to name. Um, what he said right here, even though a lot of the stuff he said was outrageous, this is really key, that observing, you can observe a lot by just watching. And what he's talking about, to me, is UX. Because observing is more important than actually maybe even the talking, because people are going to tell you things they want, but you got to ignore that, because they're going to tell you wrong. And how you're going to know it they're wrong is doing stuff like user research. Now, I don't think user research is the key to everything, but every project should start with this if you have the time. So a key point here is what happens when you listen exactly to what users say? Well, in this example that I'm about to talk about, a team of people go out and they do some user research and they find that people want to get into their wine bottles quicker. So they set out on a four-month task of developing a new corkscrew that can open wine bottles faster. The problem is they start bringing it back to users after or humans afterwards and they have the same problem. They want to get into their wine bottles faster. And as they dig further down, what they realized was what they really wanted was a twist off cap, right? So they spent six months doing something and actually building some, but something that nobody wants or nobody uses. I don't know about you, but I've experienced this in my 20 years of doing um, app development and doing websites. I've experienced that way too many times. And when I started learning some of these methods, that started changing. So how do you do re um, research? Well, I would follow these six steps. And this is my easy steps. It's probably more um, involved than this if you want to get um, into more stringent methodologies. But basically, you find a human. You ask them to do something or how they currently do something. You watch them and take notes. Record it. Tips during. Open-ended questions, a must. Take lots of notes. I'm going to repeat that over and over. Taking notes forces you to be quiet. And when you're quiet, people will feel the need to fill that space with words. And those words will be really important for what you're trying to find out. 
So you want to debrief with the team um, after each research session, um, write a brief summary, record surprises, pains, motivations, tasks that they're trying to do in their daily job. And after all of them, you want to start reviewing your recordings and get um, start picking out maybe where you have biases. Um, you want to get information that you miss, quotes, um, and then all the other things here. And I'm going through these quickly because I think user research is important, but the next part is the key. And this is what I'll call the gateway drug of UX, and it's usability. And, and I call it the gateway drug because it is so powerful. Like, if you're not going to do user research, I think that's fine, but build something really quick, even if it's just paper versions of what you want to do, and then do what I'm about to explain to you and not only explain to you, but we're going to demonstrate that. So usability. Again, I've tried to bring this down and bake it down into um, six easy steps, right? So the steps of a usability test are find a human, ask the human to do something with your stuff, have them narrate out loud, watch, listen, and this is key. You cannot help no matter how much they struggle, and they will. No matter how well you, of a designer you think you are, they will struggle to do the things you thought they could do. Watch them more than what they say. Again, you don't want to get into the um, building the corkscrew when they want the twist-offs. Take notes, record the issues, and repeat this. So how many times? This is what's great about usability. Only three times. Three times can get you 70% of the issues of the things you're trying to find. So if you ask somebody to do a task and you ask them three times, you'll find out 70% of the issues. And after five, you've hit 80 and you can see the curve. There's no point in doing any more. And you may ask yourself why. So a story that I heard from Steve Krug, and he talks about um, usability quite a bit and doing what this is about, which is guerrilla usability. Um, he talks about what a little scenario where if you're sitting at your desk and a coworker walks by your office and trips on a carpet, you, maybe you'll chuckle and you're like, ah, you know, fell on the carpet. Second person comes by, right? Walks across the carpet and trips again. Third coworker walks by, trips on the carpet. You know that there's something wrong and you got to go and see what, why people are tripping on that carpet. And you'll see the same pattern, just like the tripping on the carpet happen when you do usability tests. So tips during, use open-ended questions. And this is really important because you don't want to lead people to things that you want them to do. You want them to do what they do naturally without you being there. Um, so when people ask, what does this mean? You, you have to act like a therapist and say things like, what do you think it means? How does that make you feel? When they get surprised by something, when they click on a button or when an action happens, ask them, what did you expect to happen? When they hesitate or when they take a break and kind of not sure what's going on, you'll see this quite a bit in usability tests. I use techniques like tell me more about and I kind of trail off. That trailing off, that again, leaves that silence where they're going to try to fill in. And of course, if they're not still talking out loud, I'll remind them to either talk out loud and say, I noticed you hesitated there. What was happening? What were you thinking? Take notes again. And definitely, definitely record it because that recording, especially if you're working with clients, becomes a very powerful tool about why people may have trouble with the design that they think is great. Because most of the time, the design they think is great is really horrible, and people will, will really get frustrated with it. So after a test, again, same type of thing. Debrief with your team. Um, do a good summary. Write down all your surprises in a spreadsheet. Get your top three issues after each one, and then a watch list. This watch list is what I think of as what might, what might I need to come back to for usability. Maybe this is a problem, but I'm not sure yet. I want to see what the next two or three people do. After all the tests, record your um, review your recordings. You want to find things that you might have missed, maybe places where you didn't ask someone to explain a meaning that got lost. And that's really important because jargon tends to throw people off more than any other part of your interface. <clears throat> Discuss and record any kind of potential fixes to the usability issues you'll find, and you'll find a lot, like probably with three to five people, you'll find more than you could ever accomplish in a month. Um, so you need to pri prioritize that. So make sure you prioritize that in that step. And then finally, share with the team or share with your client. 
And most importantly, find those video highlights when it takes 30 minutes for someone to find where the, the button is to search, then you know you have a problem and you can show that to your client. So I can keep talking about this you know, for another hour and I could have made this really detailed and put you all to sleep at 8.30 in the morning before the keynote, but um, that would really suck. So instead of really sucking, I decided let's do a live usability test. So a uh, website at where I work at UNC Asheville's NEMAC, there's a, user, a potential usability problem that I found through analytics. And I've done a few usability tests on it and I'm pretty sure that it is true. So what I want to do is bring two people up. So a usability test it consists of usually three people. You have the facilitator and I'll act as the facilitator. You have an observer. The observer's job is to observe and take notes. They're not allowed to talk. And then a participant. And the participant is the person doing it. So I'll start with who wants to be the observer. And who wants to be the participant? So you can stand. You can stand right here. You have a pen and paper. So your job is to write down everything you observe. And Ralph, you're going to come up here and you're going to stand um, actually at the computer. So I hope Mac, Mac is not a problem. So remember, we're not testing the usability of Macs now. If Ralph is a Dell user, yeah, I'd rather have a mouse. <laughs> um, so the observer's job is to write down everything you see. You're going to write down struggles. If I ask Ralph um, about what he means by something, you write that down. Write things down like seems to hesitate on this. Everything you can think of that might help us diagnose usability problems. I, I'm really not very smart. <laughs> well, I That's a good. <laughs> all right. So all usability tests, um, I start with uh, intro script, and I'll have I'll have a set of resources you can download with a link afterwards, but this I got from, directly from Steve Krug. Um, it's a script I use all the time, and I read it directly from it so I don't forget any part of it. So I'm going to walk you through this session today. Before we begin, I have some information for you, and I'm going to read it to make sure I cover everything. You probably already have some idea of why we asked you here, but let me go over it again briefly. We're asking people to try to use this website we're working on so we can see whether it works as intended. The session should take about 10 minutes in this case. The first thing I want to make clear is that we're testing this site and we're not testing you. You can't do anything wrong here. In fact, this is probably the one place today where you don't have to worry about making mistakes. And I'll get very excited when you make a mistake because I'm finding problems to fix. As you use the site, I'm going to ask you as much as possible to think out loud, to say what you're looking at, what you're trying to do, and what you're thinking, maybe even what you're feeling. So it's going to feel like a therapy session. This will be a big help to us. Also, please do not worry about hurt, hurting our feelings. We're doing this to improve the site, and we need to hear your honest reactions. If you have any questions as we go along, just ask them. I might not be able to answer them because I want to see how you would react without the person who developed it sitting next to you. At the end, if you still have questions, I'll answer them then. And if you need a break at any point, just let me know. So at this point, I'm not going to do the recording because it, it's too prone to error, but I would ask Ralph for permission to record it. And we're only recording voices in the screens, and we're only sharing it with the team. Okay, do that. Okay. Any questions so far? No. All right, so now we're going to jump into the usability test. And the first part is always an introduction, and I always use this part to establish what the user thinks about what they're seeing. So take a look at this page. Tell me what you make of it, what strikes you about it, whose site you think it is, what you can do here, and what it's for. Just look around and do a little narrative. You can scroll if you want to, but don't click on anything yet. So we have some um, highlights of something. It looks like um, uh, it's hard to read. D Tell me about hard to read. Uh, up here, there's relative degrees of deforestation. Something, something about ro ro um, 
Rhode Island forests. I'm not sure what information I'm kind of going to get here. Tracking gypsy moths, I understand that. That kind of sounds interesting on uh, emergence and severity. So something to maybe help Rhode Island forests um, be, be a good forest, you know, as opposed to a not good forest. Okay. Or give you some information on that. So now that you established what the user, and this is really important to establish how the user comes in, because a lot of things that happen in the rest of their interactions are, are happen right here. And that first initial thought and how Ralph is determining what this site's about, he can run into all kinds of problems if that expectations of what is here is wrong. So establishing that and knowing what the user is thinking or the human is thinking here is really important. So the second part of a usability test is the um, scenarios. And these scenarios aren't, uh, these scenarios should model what the per person are gonna do on your website exactly in their normal day. And this is where that user research can come in handy because you'll probably have a good feel of what that is. So we'll do one, usually I do three um, scenarios, but we're only gonna do one because of time constraints. So here's the scenario. You have heard this website provides scientifically reviewed threats to forests of the United States. Your friend and colleague has mentioned that the article um, and a map viewer that displayed damage being done by forest tent caterpillars in eastern North Carolina. Use this website to open the interactive viewer, viewer displaying the information on forest tent caterpillars discussed in the article. So I want to open the interactive viewer. So I'm going to, I don't know really which one the interactive viewer is. So let's, if I click there, is it, how do I click on this, David? I don't know how yeah, to. Yeah, just, just with two fingers or one finger on the pad. Okay, well, it's not opening anything there. If I click there, how about, let me go down here. I'm not seeing the interactive viewer here. So let's, I'm, I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to be a good person here. Remember, you're looking for, um, uh, interactive map viewer that's about right forest tent caterpillars that's right on uh, well I don't see anything right here on forest tent okay. caterpillars I have this gypsy moth thing I'm not the two finger scroll on the map okay so that's not the interactive map viewer that's some uh, information on uh, we're gonna me, um, Escape. Yeah, yeah. Help me out here. Yeah. So again, we're not testing Mac usability here. <laughs> <laughs> we're testing my ability to use an uh, uh, an Apple. There so you so you, now you have your now you have your back button if you need it. Okay. So um, I'm really still trying to look at the map. Introduction. Tell me about what you're doing right now and where you're going. I, I'm. I, I have this menu across the top. It's obviously going to lead me deeper into the website. Um, so, but I really kind of want to get to this map and, and fool around on the map and, uh, and kind of do some uh, real-time products. I know that's not it. Um, so I'm kind of thinking one of these would be the map viewer over here. And here it, is. it looks like I've got to the map viewer. Um, where, where do you think you're at right now? Well, I'm hoping, I kind of want to get to a map where I think I could do some searching and okay. maybe find out some information about, about this infestation. Um, but I seem to have a little bit of a hard time finding the map viewer. Okay. Uh, and it could be just my, my inability to use this, this, this um, the Apple computer here. Okay. So. So remember, scrolling on a Mac is two fingers if you need to scroll. Okay, so. And it's opposite windows. And so, but I'm still not finding the map viewer, Dave, and I apologize. I really- No, don't apologize. I shouldn't have come up here and done this. <laughs> um, you know, if I hadn't worked with you at one time, I would have never done that. Uh, so I can see these different maps, and it gives me a, a lot of information there. Um, but I'm still haven't found a place where I can look at an actual map and and and, and search on it. So I'm a little um, there's almost too much showing. 
Okay. Tell me, what, almost, what, you, what do you mean by too much? Well, I have this, I mean, it, it looks nice. I have this column over here on the right, monitoring, monitoring, monitoring the state Rhode Island forests. And I have like graphics there and I have text and a graphic down below it. And I have the menu above it, which we all like. And I have like a quick links over here on the left. But if I want to get to a map viewer, I still haven't found something that says, here's the map, you know, <laughs> where, okay. I, where, I, where I can go search. So um, so if are you telling me now, if I wasn't sitting here prodding you to do more, that you would have given up? I'd probably, yeah, I'd. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Cool. So. So it, and at nothing this, against these people that designed this. Yeah, I, well, I really, no. It's kind of nice looking with a lot I, of knowledge. I get it. And, and so I've done this three times live now, and um, my um, theory has been proven. I was actually testing two things here in this usability test. But first, before I talk about that, we can debrief, right? What did you guys see? If shoot out anything, observer, you were taking notes, so you you probably feel more intimate. What what kind of things did you notice where the struggles were? Ralph is getting really frustrated. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, there isn't something saying map here, and it looks like there's just like pictures. There's pictures of static images, but nothing interactive, and that would make me very frustrated. Just have static pictures. If I'm looking for something interactive. Yeah. So I was saying that um, it's static maps instead of anything interactive, and I noticed that Ralph was getting increasingly frustrated with the technology and the lack of finding the information in a feedback loop. So it took him, what, 10 minutes, and he could not find it, and I've only had one person successfully find it, and they actually worked at NEMAC with me, and it took them almost 10 minutes to find the link to this. So we're testing two things. I mentioned forest tent caterpillars on purpose because none of the text um, for the title say that, so it's hidden in the text. If you notice, there's two search bars on here. So the first thing I had problems with is that there's two search bars, and I know that people can get fused by that. Which one, what does what, and people will not trust that that will put the trust down. So I'm wondering if Ralph didn't mention that or didn't use it because he was a little bit confused by where would I even search at? Well, which one will give me the right results? So instead, I'm gonna ignore that fact and try to muddle my way through it. And that happens quite a bit. Um, second, this website was designed and for a purpose, right? So with these highlights were um, the scientist's way of saying, this is how you use our viewer. Right? We, they wanted us to develop a way to show other users or other people or humans out there how they could use the viewer to identify things that are changing in the forest. And what, what I noticed in analytics when I was doing a review with one of our interns is that when people would come to the site, and this is the one on the forest tent caterpillars, when people would actually come to this article, the number of people that would come to the article might have been 500, but the number of people that went to the map viewer were zero. So it totally failed at helping people use the map viewer, right? Second, of all the people that came to our, this site, and it was in the thousands, the number of total people over three years that got to a map viewer was five. So I knew there was a usability problem, and when I looked at it, it was really clear what it was. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see this, you'll see a bunch of links, and it was called Track This Event. So I was, my first thought was, no one's ever going to find that. And, and that was a pretty easy um, thing to prove. But you could see what Ralph went through. And this is what people were going through, have been going through for three or four years that this has been up. They were trying to, they didn't even know there was a map attached to this. So really easy to figure out. But you, you'll have usability problems like this the first time you do it, guaranteed. No matter how well you think you've designed something, using the same method that I did right here, and this is really easy. And with three people and three tasks, it takes maybe an hour each, right, at most. So in three or four hours and half a day's work, you can solve huge problems for your users. And you can be much further away from what the DMV offers and closer to that dream, right? So the second thing I want to bring up is that you notice I didn't really test a map viewer. 
And the reason I did not is because I'm at a GIS conference, and guess what happens? We all do GIS, right? So the problem is that we do it enough where using GIS becomes um, more subconscious, and the cognitive load of coming into a viewer is much lower. So our ability to deal with the muddling is higher than someone who's not a GIS professional that does it every day. So it would be a very biased test. You'd still find problems, and you just have to be more aware that it would be easier for a GIS person to find those problems. So you need to understand parts of that in advance, too, because a lot of what we're talking about, this is cognitive psychology, and understanding those cognitive loads and what that means is really important. So that's all I have. But I do have one last thing I'm going to ask of everybody. I'll come back to the resources, but I have homework for everyone. I do. So you didn't know you were going to come into an 8.30 session and get homework at a conference, and you're probably upset by that. But I do want everyone in here to find one project, do one usability test on it, and then either tweet me at, at Davism or at my email written up here and tell me what happened and tell me about it. Or maybe this is a challenge. And if you're doing that and you're scared to do it and you want help, same thing. Send me an email, send me a tweet, and I'll do whatever I can to help you and give you the resources you need to try it. Because I think everybody at this conference would do this in one of their projects just one time. The difference would be so significant. And once you do it one or two times, it's a gateway drug you will not want to stop because it's so powerful. It's better than any code you could ever write, any viewer you could ever download that's super easy. This, this will change the way you do things. So thank you. And big hand for the participants.